Uh, let me make sure I'm on first. Y'all know how I do it. I ain't been in the living room in a long time. Uh, my wife and kids, they left out. So it gives me a little time to talk to you all. So let me make sure I'm on first. And then uh, uh, I can start. Give me one second. Uh, yeah, so there we go. I'm on. I have volume. Uh, I'm going to click on this real fast. Cut my volume down. I'm on the cell phone. All right. So, shalom, everyone. I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Uh, I know I was supposed to be doing this last night, but I actually did a song, uh, Straight Dripping Chocolate. Man, bumping song. Hope you all like it. So, uh, you know, first giving honor to the Most High, who's the head of my life. Uh, the Father over all, uh, the orchestra, the architecture, the creator of all. Uh, without him, none of this would be uh, possible. So, uh, you know, first giving respect and, 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 and much um, blessings and, and uh, submission and all the things that for subjection to the Father. Second, uh, to Christ the King, uh, the Lord of all, the Lord of hosts. Uh, the Lord of glory, who is the king in this kingdom, this everlasting new uh, covenant, this everlasting new kingdom, uh, the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, today, what I plan on doing today, uh, it's a lot going on inside of my community, dealing with my uh, black Hebrew Israelite family, as well as other Christians um, who's outside of it, who don't consider themselves black Hebrew Israelites, or those who we would consider in the old days Gentiles, but now spiritual Israel. So, so that would cover all nations. Um, I want to go over the deity of Christ uh, today because I feel that the reason why we have this so-called Torah only, Tanakh only, uh, where do we hear about Christ in the Old Testament and where do they say worship Christ and etc. cetera. Uh, this deity is made up by the Grecians and the Romans and etc. cetera. So today, I want to go uh, through some of the Tanakh in the Torah, as well as some of the New Testament, to show uh, the deity of Christ in the Old Testament. Because for a lot of people don't understand that the Torah and the Tanakh, which we call the Old Testament, it actually speaks of two gods, uh, two lords. So we're going to go through the day. And we're going to go through those two gods and those two lords that the Torah that to not speak of. And we're going to use the entire Bible to show you, as well as some secular uh, history, some secular literature, Hebraic, to show you that this second God, one of the two gods, was actually indeed Christ. And we're going to show you some, uh, you know, some pre-existent Christ in the, in the uh, Old Testament also. But the point today is to show you that the deity of Christ has always been around. And him coming to earth in man form, uh, saving man from the south, uh, from their sins, from salvation, and all of, that, all of that stuff that came with it, in order for us to be up under his rulership, uh, once again, uh, it's all was playing out from the Father from the beginning. So you cannot have uh, a Torah or a Tanakh without the deity of Christ, without uh, Christ being the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord of hosts, and etc. And the Father not really having uh, too much communication with mankind. He was looking at the big picture, the big goal, and he let the Son, his Son, do all of the, uh, the manual labor. Uh, that's just a, that's the, you know, that's the construct. And we do all Christ's manual labor. But, Hopefully, you all can pull some from the information today. Um, most of this is coming from the dialogue of Trifo with the uh, with the Jew. Sorry, the dialogue of Justin Martyr with Trifo the Jew. It was a dialogue between a Christian and a Jew, a Jew and a Gentile, in the first in the second century. Sorry, second century. So I'll have all of my notes right here. I'm going to put it in the PDF form. I'm going to have it on the screen so you can see it. So we don't have to flip through a lot of books. It's all going to be right there for you. And we're going to be using the Septuagint because I like the Septuagint. Um, the original Septuagint pre predates the Masoretic text, what we have in the King James Version Bible right now, by a thousand, by a thousand years. So Christ himself and the disciples 
and all those that's out of the New Testament, they was pulling from the Septuagint, which was a Greek copy or, or the Torah and the Tanakh written inside of the Grecian language. It was translated from the original Hebrew, the Hebraic scrolls into the Grecian language, and now we have copies of copies of copies. So we have pretty much, uh, not the original, but we have a copy of copies of the copies of the original, which still predates some of the Masoretic texts that's going on right now, which people coined the King James Version, or uh, that codex that they used. So that being said, um, if you have not, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's try to go there real fast so we can show everybody. Uh, sorry, this is my Facebook. And it's not what I was wanting. So let's go here. My YouTube channel. So if you have not, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Assembly of Sound Doctrine Channeler. My YouTube channel is AOSD. C H A N D L E R. Shalom to everybody that's out there listening. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. I only have 91 uh, subscribers. I know it's really, really low, but you know, you all can help me increase it. But I need at least 100 so I can customize my channel even more. So I have did a lot of talking and Shalom out there. Shalom, Miss uh, Whitney. Shalom, Mr. Lee. Uh, the God and Son and Chucky and whoever that's going to be popping in and out throughout the day and uh, tag whoever you want to. Uh, let me tag uh, Mr. Raphael because he said he was wanting to see this also. And let me tag my mom's because she was going to see it. And just a few more people. I'm just tagging a few people who I think would want to be tagged in this. Let's see here. I'm going to tag two more people, then I'm going to go away, uh, make way, and we should be able to run with it. I don't know why I did that. But y'all are looking right now on my YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe if you have not. All right. So now, let's get ready to begin. Um, sorry. All right. We're going to be pulling uh, from different uh, perspectives. Right now, we're going to prove that the Christ himself was the Lord of hosts. So that's first thing first. Uh, we're going to use some of the KJV, but mainly the Septuagint. So as you can see, I have the KJV right here, but I'm going to go to the Septuagint, and we're going to start proving right now that uh, Christ was the Lord of hosts. So I hope you have your popcorn, and hope you're able to relax, because it's going to take a while the deity of Christ inside the Old Testament. So now, Psalms 23, uh, which is 24 in the uh, KJV, but it's 23 in the Septuagint. A Psalm of David on the first day of the week, which we would call here, what, Sunday. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all that the world in it. He has founded it upon the seas and prepared it upon rivers. Who shall go to the mountain, which will be the temple of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? So now we are already seeing that the Holy Spirit is upon David. And David, he's dropping some knowledge right here. So I want to read uh, some of these parallels to see what's going on. So we have Daniel. And I'm going to parallel, um, uh, I guess I can maybe find my Septuagint. Hold on. Uh, hold on, give me one sec, see if I can find the Septuagint. Look for my 
Let's see what two would you All right, so I'm going to parallel the Septuagint with it. All right, so the first one is we're going to look at Daniel 7, 13 through 14. Daniel 7, 13 through 14. And it reads, let's see if I can make this a little smaller. I want it all to fit on the screen. I beheld in the night vision, and lo, one coming with the clouds of heaven as the Son of Man. And he came to the Ancient of Days and, and was brought near him. And to him was given the dominion and the honor and the kingdom. And all nations, tribes, and languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. So this is the uh, vision that Daniel was having. So this is actually going through the whole timeline, right? So now, who should go up to the mountain or the temple of the Lord, and who should stand in his holy place? So in the vision, this is after Christ is uh, ascended into heaven. So Christ is ascended into heaven and he's brought before the Ancient of Days. So, this is the vision. This is what, um, Shalom, Brother Martin. Shalom indeed. Shalom. So this is what is being said in Psalm. Psalm is giving the commentary of what happened after Christ died. So, uh, well, after he uh, ascended into heaven, which we find in Acts. So now let's go to Psalms 109. Alright, we're almost there. Psalms 109. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send out a rod of power for thee out of Sion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies, which thee is the which thee is dominion in the day of thy power, in the splendor of thy saints I have begotten thee from the womb before the morning. The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord at thy right hand has dashed in pieces kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill up the number of corpses. He shall crush the heads of many of, of the many on the earth. He shall drink of the brook and the way thereof shall he lift up his head. So now. We see that, um, see, all the Bible goes together. Each prophet and stuff, they was given, they was given uh, sections of the story. You know, it's just like if you see a playwright. If you chop the playwright up, if you chop the play up, and you give the pieces, uh, send the pieces across uh, the world, everybody's going to have a part of that one uh, finale, or that one entire play. But once you put it all together, the story comes together and it makes sense. And you can see the beginning uh, to the end. So this is what was going on throughout the history of the Bible. People was getting different parts of the play. And once we have the Bible now all intact, so we can see the beginning from the end. See, they did not have the whole Bible intact. They got it in portions. That's why they can only say the portions that they had. That they had. So now, we see that Christ goes up and he's uh he's brought before the ancient of days which is the father and then he is set upon the father's right hand in power to make his enemies christ's enemies his footstool and while christ was given dominion and the kingdom and everything it was let it be known that not only is he king but he's also the priest He's a priest after the order of Melchizedek, but he will be the first priest. So he's a king and he's a priest. And all of this occurred when he was able to go up into the heavens. So now, 
we have the backstory of what's going on. So now, who shall go up to the mountain of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? The only person that was able to go up into the mountains and stand in the Lord's holy place was Christ. He that is innocent in his hands and pure in his heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully to his neighbor, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and mercy from God his Savior. So now, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and mercy from God his Savior. So this person who went up to the mountain of the Lord and was able to stand in his holy place. See, this is, this is more of the heavenly realm. This is not more of the earthly. This is more of the heavenly realm. He's able to go into the heavenly realm and he's able to stand before God. See, this is in the Tanakh. Uh, so this is not uh, 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 people making up things. This, this is something for my Torah only people to go inside the Tanakh, in the Tanakh and start questioning themselves or questioning their understanding. So this person, he was able to go up in front of the God, his Savior. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek the face of the God of Jacob. So now let's go to uh, John uh, 14 and 8 real fast. Let's go to John 14 and 8. John 14 and 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He had seen he that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and thou sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou that believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I spake unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So now, let's go back. Sorry, let's go back to uh, there we go. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek the face of the God of Jacob. So now, let's read it again. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Who is that he? He is the one that um, that went up into the mountain of the Lord and the one that stood in his holy place. He is that innocent in his hand and pure in his heart so that he and his is the one that went up into the Lord. So now, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and mercy from God, his Savior. This is the generation that seek him, that seek him, that seek the face of the God of Jacob, that seek him, that seek the face of the God of of Jacob. Once again, this he, this him, this is the deity outside of the God, his Savior. So this is a deity outside of the Father, of the, the, the Father of all. This deity right here is whom the people, the generation, is seeking and this hymn would be 
the God of Jacob. So the God of Jacob, whom the generation is seeking, is receiving mercy from his God. Once again, the God of Jacob, whom the generation seeks, is seeking mercy from his God. And we're going to keep reading and we're going to show more and more and more how Christ actually is that God of Jacob. But we have it right here. So now, lift up your gates, ye princes, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. So these are doors that last for eternity. So this, to me, seems like more of the heavenly realm. Because these will have everlasting doors in it. So we will have princes in heaven and indeed and everlasting doors. But let's keep reading. And the king of glory shall come in. So now, this king of glory is the same one that went up into the temple of the Lord, the same one who was able to stand in the Lord's holy place, the same one who was innocent in his hands and prayer in his heart, this king of glory is the same one that receives a blessing from the Lord, and he's the same one that has mercy from his from God, his Savior. This king of glory is the same one that the generation of them seek after, and I'm saying that this, that this king of glory is the same one called the, the God of Jacob. But let's see. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. So now, we have that this king of glory right now, right? He's a Lord also. He's a Lord also. He's, he's the Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Now let's go to Revelation 19. We can't. We don't have to read the whole 11 through 21, which we, we might need to, but... Let, let's see, Revelation 19. Revelation 19, 11. It says, The rider on the white horse, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him was called Faithful and True, and his righteousness he doth judge and make war. So now we have a judgment, and he makes war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. So he was a king. On his head was many crowns. So he was a king. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. So now he has a, a, a dignified name. He himself is called the word of God. He's coming out of heaven. He has, he's a king. He has many crowns. Uh, he's able to make war. He's judged. Let's see what else happens. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So now, this word of God, he also has an army behind him. So now, and out of his mouth go the sharp sword, which is the gospel, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He's going to smite the nations and he's going to rule over the nations. How do we know that? Because he has many crowns. So he he controls all nations. He's over all nations. He has many crowns, which means he's over many kingdoms. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty God. Now let's see. And he had on his vesture and upon his thigh a name written, King of kings and lords of lords. So now, he's the word of God. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. 
uh, I guess we can, uh, yeah, we can, we can go back now. Okay. So we see this great description of Christ. So now let's, let's, let's dive back into this. So now the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So we didn't see Christ being strong coming at the, the you know, revelation, a vision about his second coming. He's coming with many angels. He has many crowns. Uh, he demands respect. He's the word of God. Uh, many uh, bodies would be um, uh, will be many bodies would be piled up because of him. So now lift up your gates ye princes and be lifted lift up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. So let's go to Matthew 22, 42 through 44. Uh, Matthew 22, hello, give me one sec so I can get there. Matthew 22, 42 through 44. Saying, what ye think of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then does David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So now, listen to what it says. What ye think of Christ? Of Christ. Whose son is he? The Lord said unto my Lord. So now we have two lords, right? And we know Christ is one of these lords. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If then call him Lord, if David then call him Lord, how is he his son? So now, the Lord, which would be the Father, said unto my, that my would be David. The Lord said unto my, David's Lord, sit thou on my right hand. So we have two different lords in the heavenly realm right here. We have two lords in the heavenly realm right here. So now let's go back to uh, where we was at. Now, lift up your gates, ye princes, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who was the king of kings, the Lord of lords? This is Christ. So now, who is the king of glory? Now, who will be this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The one that gets his blessings from the almighty father. Who would be the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So now, we have in the heavenly realm two different powers. We have the one power that blesses the other power. We have the one God that blesses the other God. Now, this is in Psalms uh, uh, foretelling the future through the Holy Spirit. So now, we have the Lord of hosts. So, inside of the Bible right now, once you see Lord of hosts, you need to think automatically that he is the king of glory, but he is not the father God of all. See, the father God is the savior of the Lord of hosts. So in the Bible, once you see a Lord of hosts, 
is not the Father God. When she, even though the Lord of hosts is the King of glory, the God of Jacob, he's not the Father God. He's a different power. So now, we're going to go on to show more. We have in Psalms 44, 1 through 17, we have two gods. And we're going to prove that we have two gods in the heavenly realm. We're going to prove that we have two gods. So now, once again, this is coming out to Septuagint. Uh, Psalms 44, 1. My heart has uttered a good matter. I declare my works to the king. My tongue is the pen of a quick writer. And we know the king, the king of glory. This will be Christ. But for the people who don't believe it's Christ yet, just know it's a different deity power other than the Father. So now, my tongue is the pen of a quick writer. Thou art more beautiful than the sons of men. So he's comparing them to the sons of men. Grace has been shed forth on thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. So now we have a God blessing thee, thee, the king, forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O mighty one. And we saw this in Revelation that this was about Christ. With the, when he had the name written on his thigh, king of kings, lord of lords. But anyway, in thy comeliness and in thy beauty, and bend thy bow and prosper and reign because of truth and meekness and righteousness. See, these are all the characteristics of Christ. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection. No man comes to the Father but by me. But we have it. Uh, righteousness and thy right hand shall guide thee wonderfully. Thy weapons are sharpened, mighty one. The nation shall fall under thee. What did Christ have on his head in Revelations? He had many crowns, which means he conquered many nations. See, the nations shall fall under thee. They are in the heart of the king's enemies. Thy throne, O God. So now, he's calling this mighty one a God. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a scepter of righteousness. Look what verse 7 says. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, one God, the first God, thy God, which is the highest God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness before thy fellows. So now, I'm going to read it without the breaks, without my, as you see my extra notes I put in here, I'm going to read it without this. And if you want this PDF, uh, just inbox me or uh, ask for it, and I'll give me your email address and my inbox, etc., and I'll send this PDF to you. But it says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, Thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness beyond thy fellows. So now we see the Holy Spirit inspired uh, Daniel, sorry, David, uh, David, my bad, these is messing me up. The Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit inspired David said in Psalms 44 and 7, Therefore, God, thy God. So these are two different gods in the heavenly realm. Once again, these are two different gods in the heavenly realm. One God has anointed the other God. Once again. This, this is before Christ came on the scene in heavenly flesh. So, once again, I tell you, Christ was a God himself when he came on earth 
He he came in man form, but he started off a God in heaven. But if we don't want to hit that just yet, let's just see where we at right now. Before there was a New Testament, before the disciples came upon the scene, this is what the Israelites knew. They knew that there was two different heavenly powers inside the inside of the heavens. They knew that one was in subjection to the other, but they knew that they themselves was in subjection to both of them. The people of the earth was in subjection to both of them, but one God was in subjection to the other. So now, therefore God, this is the first God, thy God, which is the God over this God has anointed thee. That God anointed this God. So it's two gods. This is very important when we read in scriptures to understand all of this. For my people that deny Christ, that deny the New Testament, deny the deity, and etc. Talking about I follow the God of the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But in the same breath, you deny Christ. When Christ is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You deny him, you deny him and then you say you follow him in the same breath. It's impossible. But now, so we see that there's two different gods here. Myrrh and Statch and Cassia are exhaled from thy garments and out of the ivory palaces. Which, which, with which king's daughters have gladdened thee for thine honor, which is that king, which is that God, the queen stood by on thy right hand, clothed in vesture, wroth with gold and arrayed in diverse colors. Hear, O daughter, and see, and incline thine ear. Forget also thy people and thy father's house. See, people who try to make this be about uh, Solomon and David. It's impossible. Solomon wasn't a god. David wasn't a god. This is what's going on in the heavenly realm. Once you try to make everything carnal, dealing with subs and etc., you miss the whole point. This ain't about David. This ain't about Solomon. This is about the heavenly gods. So now, uh, thank you, Begotten. Thank you, thank you. I'm trying, I'm trying to reach out and get it now. So verse 11. Because the king has desired thy beauty, he is thy Lord. So now, hear, O daughter, and see. So the king has desired thy daughter's beauty, for he is thy Lord. So the king is the Lord over the daughters. And the daughter of Tyre shall adore him with gifts. So now we have the Gentiles. We have the Gentiles adoring the Lord with gifts. So we have the Israelites whom he's Lord over. And then we have the Gentiles also adoring him with gifts. And the rich of the people of the land shall supplicate thy favor. All her glory is that of the daughter of the king of Esabod, robed as she is in golden fringed garments and embroidered clothing. Virgins shall be brought to the king after her. Her fellows shall be brought to thee. They shall be brought with gladness and exaltation. They shall be led into the king's temples. Into the king's temple. So we see that this king has a temple. Instead of thy father's children are born to thee. Thou shalt make them princes over all the earth. They shall make charge. Yeah, they shall make mention. Of thy name from generation to generation. Therefore shall the nation give thanks to thee forever, even forever and ever. So this Lord name shall be mentioned 
from generation to generation. So now, let's look at Luke 1, 32 through 33 now. Let's look at Luke 1, 32 through 33. Luke 1, 32 through 33. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom and of his kingdom shall be no end. So, once we go right back here, they shall make mention of his name from generation to generation. Therefore shall the nation give thanks to thee forever, even forever and ever. Why? Because he has an everlasting kingdom that never stops. If his kingdom never ends, that means he's always ruling inside of that kingdom. So they are bringing his name up from generation to generation forever because he's a king forever, forever. He has a kingdom forever. So now let's go to Jesus being called God and Lord. So first thing first, let's look at John 20, 27 through 29 from the King James Version. Then said he to Thomas, this is Christ talking to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless, but believing. And look what Thomas said. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Once again, Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Who was he talking to? Verse 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, which is pretty much us today, and yet have believed, which is too, pretty much us today in, in Christianity and etc. Or if you don't like Christianity, the called out ones, or whatever you want to uh, frame your name, that's it. But Thomas called Christ Lord and God. So now, the disciples was around him. So, if Christ wasn't God, you don't think the disciples would have spoke up? I mean, that's almost that's, that's blasphemy. That's called for a stoning. Or you don't think Christ would have rebuked him and said, no, 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 Thomas, no, hold on. I'm your Lord. I'm not your God. I'm just your Lord. I'm just your Savior who just hears it. For your sins. I'm not the guy. No. That did not happen. Thomas called him my Lord and my God. And they all understood. That this Christ. Is the Lord of hosts. This Christ is the God. That the heavenly father. Above all God. Anointed. This is the God. Who has an everlasting kingdom. This God. This Lord. Is who Christ was. So now, let's go. Uh, Titus 2 10 through 13. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So now, the grace of God. The high Father God that bringeth salvation, that will be Christ, had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this 
present world. So now, let me see. Hold on, let me see that real fast. Titus 2, 10 through 13. Hold on, let me see something real fast. Yeah, age, Aeon, yeah, age. So that should be age right there. Okay, so let me let me reread it. So that's supposed that should be age right there. So now let me get down. So now teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we shall live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Looking for that blessed hope, that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So now, was they looking for the Father? to return with Christ. Once again, was they looking for the Heavenly Father above all to return with Christ? Or was he saying that the great God and Savior was Jesus Christ? The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So now, I'm here to say that they knew that Christ would also be that God. The God, our, see, look, the God, our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. So I'm saying that this God Savior is this same Savior God right here, which is Christ. But let's see if the people was looking for God the Father to come with Jesus Christ or is he saying that the great God is Jesus Christ? Let's see who they was looking for to appear. Matthew 16, 27 through 28 from the King James Version Bible. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angel. Hold on now. So right here, we have the glorious appearing of the great God. And right here, we have the Son of Man coming in the glory of his Father. So now, hopefully we see that they was looking for Christ to come. So this right here, appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, this is all attributes about Christ, the great God and Jesus Christ. But let's keep reading. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, with his angels. And then he, who is he? The Son of Man. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. What do we see in the book of Revelations? We see Christ coming with the armies to uh, pile up the bodies of the nations that rejected him. What do we have right here? Him coming with angels to reward every man according to his works. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you. He's talking to the disciples. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death. Till. So he didn't tell them that they wasn't going to die. He's just telling them the marker what they should expect before some of them died. So now. Which shall not taste of death. Till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And what kingdom? His kingdom. Who has an everlasting kingdom? The Son of Man, the Lord, the God has an everlasting kingdom. Till the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So now, we once again, we see that this God, this God of the Old Testament, one of the gods in heaven, he was going to have an everlasting kingdom. His name was never going to be forgotten amongst the generations. 
So, I'm here to show you that the scriptures prove that this God is Christ. But now, let's see also, once we go to Jude, and for and uh, for everybody uh, who's not a full preterist, Matthew 16, 27, and 28 proves that Christ said that his second return was going to be during the generation of the disciples. I very last say to you, he's talking to the disciples. So he taught them that the finale of the Bible, the revelation, everything up, was going to be fulfilled in their generation. That judgment day was going to be in their generation. When he came with his kingdom, this is what Christ taught. So, no matter how people want it, future, or how people want it, only one God in the heavens. That's not what the scripture teaches. So, now there's no need. So, don't come to me talking about we're under the law of Moses and we got to do this in Christ and we're waiting on Christ to come with the, with the people. And look, this is being displayed. No, this happened first century. We are in the new heavens and the new earth under Christ's leadership. But now, Let's keep reading. Now, Jude, Jude actually is another restatement of Matthew 16, 27, and 28. But Jude got this from the book of Enoch. So that means the book of Enoch, which predates, it was created before the New Testament. It was created during the Maccabean era, before the New Testament. So uh, Jude pulled from Enoch. Christ made the same statement, which he pulled from Isaiah, which is also found in Enoch. Enoch came after Isaiah. So they're always using these same works that people call non canonical today, which is the book of Enoch. Jude pulls directly from the book of Enoch, which pulls directly from the book of Isaiah. Therefore, Enoch is in, um, um, what, what I want to say, agreement. With Isaiah, Enoch is in agreement with what we call canonical scriptures. So let's see what Jude pulled from Enoch, and I can show you uh, in a second. And Enoch also, the seven from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, "Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand, ten thousands of his saints." So now, what did Matthew say? The Son of Man comes with his angels. What did Jude say? He Instead of saying the Son of Man, he called him the Lord. That Lord, the Lord in heaven, that Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to do what? To execute judgment upon all. So, this was supposed to occur during the generation of the disciples, first century. This is Jude. So once you read Jude, understand Jude is talking about the first century audience. And let's see if we can just, uh, let's see if we can uh, real fast. Let's see if we can find some, uh, the book of Enoch real fast. One of my favorite books. Book of Enoch. Book of Enoch. Let's just see what he's pulling from. Um, it's just a side bit, but let's just see what he's pulling from. The Book of Enoch, right here. Look at what it says. These are the words of the blessing of Enoch, according to which he blessed the chosen and righteous who must be present in the day of distress, which is appointed for the removal of all the wicked and impious. So, uh, in other versions of Enoch, it says the day of tribulation. But, the book of Enoch was for those living in that first century generation. So, once you read Enoch, it's not about for us anyway. It was for them reading in the first century generation. And let's see, this is where he pulled... Um, Right here. And behold, well, let's read it. But for righteousness, he will make peace, and he will keep safe the chosen, and mercy, mercy will be upon them. They will all belong to God, and will prosper and be blessed, and the light of God will shine upon them. Keep saying God, God, right? And behold, 
he comes. Who comes? God. And behold, he comes with 10,000 holy ones to execute judgment upon all them and destroy the empires and to contend with them all flesh and contend and to contend, sorry y'all, with all flesh concerning everything that the sinners and the impious have done and wrought against him. So, Enoch said that this was going to be God doing this. Okay? Here we have uh, in Jude, it said the Lord was going to do this. But Matthew explains it, which is the Son of Man, which is Christ doing this. So that God, they refer to him as God in Enoch. In Jude, they, they refer to him as the Lord. And in Matthew, they refer to him as the Son of Man. He had plenty of names, but it's the same exact person. But now, if that don't even make it clear for you, let's go to John 1 and 1 and 14 from the King James Version. In the beginning was the Word. This is Christ. And the Word was with God. So now, we have the Word being with God. So in the beginning, in the beginning right here, we have two deities. We have the Word and we have God. Okay? We have the Word in the beginning and we have God. Two deities. But let's see what else it says. And the Word was God. The Word was God. So in other words, in the beginning, we had two gods. We had a God with another God. The Father God, and we had the Word God, or the Son God, who was in subjection. And not S-U-N, Son, as in pagan worship, but S-O-N. So we had the Son God, who was in subjection to the Father God. So in the beginning, there was two gods. One God was considered the Word, which means one God was in subjection to the other God. Just as you speak, you speak words out, and the things that you speak is begetting in the world. If you tell someone, uh, go do this, go to the store, your word authorize the person to go and uh, bring back your desired result. So this is what Christ operated as. He operated as the word. The Father spoke it, Christ did it, making him the word. But now, verse 14, and the word was made flesh. So we have the word being God in the beginning, in the heavenly realm. The word was made flesh flesh, okay, and the wealth among us. So now we have God in the heavenly realm was made flesh in the wealth amongst mankind. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see all of these words, how they describe Christ all the time? Gloryful, righteous, grace, Truth, because he came from the heavenly realm as a power. So then we have John 17 and 5 from the King James Version. And now, O oh Father, this is listen what Christ said. This is Christ talking to the Father. This is Christ talking to the heavenly Father God, the, the big God above all. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So now we have that word saying Christ. I mean saying Father, I have came on earth. I have did what you wanted me to do. My time is about up. So now Give me that same glory I had with thee before the world was. So now let me see. Let me let me check this out real fast. John 17, 5. Let me check this out real fast. Let's see. 
See, right here, the word is not Ea. It doesn't mean age here. Right here, the word means cosmos. The word world means cosmos right here. So this is the cosmos, the creation, the universe, and, the, and, the, and everything. So now let me go right back to where we was at. So now, that's cosmos right there. The world or the universe. So now, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory. See, Christ had this glory. See? With the glory which I had, which means he had it in the beginning. He had that glory with the Father in the beginning, with thee, before the world was. So now we see once again that Christ was of the old world. Jesus Christ, the one we call Jesus Christ, lived before the world was created. So what do you think he was doing in heaven? When the If you think that the Father God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which he would be because technically he's the God over everybody, but in, in a focal point, that God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be Christ. But if you say no, what do you think Christ was doing in heaven while the Most High was doing everything? You think he would just be an idol in heaven instead of doing the Most High's wills? He would just be an idol. He's chilling, right? The, the, the Father God doing all of the work, and the Son is just sitting back being lazy, just chilling, doing whatever he wanted to. That's not what's happening. This is all subjection. It's all structure, kingdom structure. So we have now Christ having that glory. We have Christ being around since the beginning, and we have the understanding that Christ was known as God. They knew it was two gods in the heavenly realm. But now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 8 from the King James Version. Which none of the princes of this world, this world, knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Who was the Lord of hosts? Who was the King of glory? Who was the King of glory and the Lord of hosts? That one that was able to stand before the Father God. That was the Christ. You see it now. Do you see how we're vibing? That Jesus Christ was that Lord of glory. He was that God that was in the heavenly realm doing what the Father told him to do. He was that God. But now, Let's keep reading 1 Corinthians 8 and 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things are we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom <coughs> are all things, and we by him. So they understand. There's but one, see, throughout the Old Testament, they was calling him God, 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 God. But now, we see when the Holy Spirit comes in, this is just one way that Paul was trying to separate them so they understood the deities. We have one God, which is the Father of all. Created there, all people, all deities are in subjection to him. But then we have one Lord, one King, one King of glory, one Lord of hosts, who is always in subjection to him, but he's in subjection to the Father. So, these are two different deities, both powerful. One is just in subjection to the other. One Lord, and they call him Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts and etc. By whom are all things and we by him. See, we in him, we are in the Father, and we by Christ because Christ uh, created us. We have the Spirit of the Father in us, and we was created by Christ. So now, Colossians 1, 12 through 16. Giving thanks unto the Father, which is the, the main God, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, because there was in light, and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So they was already translated 
into the kingdom of Christ. Even though, see, people want that physical kingdom coming now, but now we see Christ said, "My kingdom is not of this world. Uh, if my kingdom, my kingdom was of this world, and you know, my people would come fight before me." And then later on, he said, "You know, a person can't say low here or low there, for the kingdom is within you." So that kingdom dealt more with uh, uh, the way that you carried yourself. It dealt more with how people acted in righteousness inside of the new covenant. They wanted the new covenant, therefore they get the kingdom on earth. They get the blessings and etc. on earth. Now, people today want gold and, and this and that. But what Christ gives you, he gives you peace of mind and etc. He makes a living on this earth a little bit uh, less stressful than the people that's out in the world. The people that's popping anxiety pills and people that's popping uh, these depression pills. And these people that want to commit suicide every day. And these people that just can't find a way and wake up crying, go to sleep crying. These people haven't found the kingdom. Us people, us who don't do that. We have more of the kingdom. We help our brothers, we help our sisters, etc. But that's a whole different tangent from later on. Tra translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, this is Christ, even the forgiveness of sins, which was through Christ, who is the image, now Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So now, we have Christ being the image of the Father God, the main God. He is his image, and he was the firstborn, which means he was there when everything was created. He was there with, with the Father, so it seems like to me this is the structure. The Father created Christ first. That's what I get from it, but hey, that's on your breakdown. But now, let's keep reading. For by him were all things created. By who? the firstborn of every creature in whom we have redemption through his blood, the Son. By him, Christ, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. So, we have now, I want you to tell me if Christ is not God or a God, one of the gods that was in heaven, if Christ was not a God, then how in the world was he able to create all things in heaven and earth how was he able to create visible and invisible things? How was he able to create all things? You don't think he had some type of spiritual power? How is this man able to, well, this deity, able to create all things if he's not a God? See, the Father tells him to do it, and then he go does it. That's how it works. <laughs> he's the Word. The Father says it. The Word does it. The Father God says it. The Word God does it. So we have Christ right here being the image of the Father, but all things was created by him and for him. He's the Christ. All right, so now, which is the God? So now Hebrews 2, 9 and 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. So now, he was made a little lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death. So if he wasn't made a little lower than the angels, he couldn't have died. He could not have died. So he had to come in a body in which he could have died. Crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Now, how could this deity, Christ, Taste death for every man. Because he's a God. He has power. He has so much power and glory that his power, his sacrifice was an atonement for everybody. It was enough for everybody because it was a godly person, a godly spirit atoning for mankind. But now, 
For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So how was the captain of their salvation perfect? Through sufferings. Through his suffering, he was able to bring salvation and make it perfect. The things that the laws of Moses could not do. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4, 9, 16, 21 through 22. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. The rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. So now, we have Christ following Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. We have Christ following Moses and the Israelites coming out of Egypt. So now, let's keep reading verse 9. Neither let us tempt Christ. If he wasn't a, a, a major figure, why would they worry about tempting him? Neither let us tempt Christ. And some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. The cup of blessing, verse 16, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion, communion of the body of Christ? Verse 21, ye cannot drink of the cup of the Lord. So now we see that this cup of Christ was actually the cup of the Lord. So now we have him calling Christ Lord again. Well, what do they call him? Lord of hosts and, and etc. But anyway, and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. So now we have the, uh, the cup being of the Lord. That communion was the cup of the Lord. And we have Christ being that rock, that spiritual rock that followed Moses. So now, uh, in verse 22, do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? They said, are we stronger than Christ? Are we stronger than that Lord? So now, Exodus 17, 1 through 6, from the Septuagint, and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to their commandment of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. Wherefore the people did shy with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you do ye tempt the Lord? See, we have it right here. Don't provoke the Lord to jealousy. Don't tempt Christ. So right here in the old days, do we tempt the Lord or their older days? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us out? us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said unto Moses, Who said it? The Lord said unto Moses, Who followed Moses? Christ, that spiritual rock followed Moses. So now, and the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of, of, the, of the elders of Israel, and thou ride, wherewith thou smotest the river, take it in thy hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb. Who was that spiritual rock that followed Moses? It was Christ. What did Moses call him? Lord. Who did people say that he was talking to in the old days? God. He was talking to God. But he was talking to the Christ God. The Word God. Not the Father God, but the Word God. Behold, 
I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall, shall, shall come out and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So now, let's go to Genesis 17 now, 1 through 5. We're going to go right back to the, uh, the Torah. Let's go to the Torah now to see that Christ was the Lord and Christ was the God in Torah. So now, and Abraham was 99 years old. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I am thy God. Be well pleasing before me and be blameless. Now, who said it? The Lord. What did the Lord say to Abram? I am thy God. Okay. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell upon his face, and God spoke to him, saying, and behold, and I behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of a multitude of nations. And thy name shall be no more called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abram. For I have made thee a father of many nations. So now, we have the Lord appearing before Abraham and saying, I am thy God, right? So now, Genesis 18, 1 through 3. And God appeared to him. So we have God coming before Moses all the time. By the oak of memory. And he sat by the door of his tent at noon. And he lifted up his eyes and beheld in lo, Three men stood before him. So now, what happened? Let's see what happened. God appeared to him. And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw three men. So that means one of the three men was God. Once again, he had God appear before him. And as he lifted up his eyes, he beheld three men stood before him. So one of those men had to be God. And having seen them, he ran to meet them from the door of his tent and did uh, obsidians to the ground. And he said, Lord, if indeed I have found grace in thy sight, pass not by thy servant. So now, how did he know what the Lord looked like? Because the Lord has already appeared to him before. The Lord appeared to him before. So this is how he knew what the Lord looked like. See, God appeared to God appeared to him up here. So this is how he knew what God looked like down here. So now, let's read what John 1 18 says for a side note. No man had seen God at any time. The only begotten Son which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared no. So, the Son declared the Father. Why? Because no man had ever seen the Father. They knew of the Father through the declaration of Christ. So, when you have this God and this Lord appearing before people in the Torah and the Tanakh know that it was not the Father God. It was Christ the God. The Word the God. Not the Father God. Nobody had seen the Father God, but Christ was able to declare him. So, this God that they were seeing was the word was Christ in the Torah. Now verse John 6 46. Not that any man had seen the Father, save he which is of God. He had seen the Father. He which is of God. He had seen the Father. So Christ, which was of God, he had seen the Father. But no man had seen the Father. No man. 
The only person that has seen the Father is the only begotten Son, which was Christ, dealing with man. So these men, they were seeing Christ, calling him God. He was the God of Abraham that they were seeing. He was the God that spoke to them in the bush. He was the God that spoke to them on Mount uh, that stood upon the rock. Christ was that God. That's why that same God who dealt with mankind throughout the whole Torah to not, he came down to uh, redeem, redeem mankind. He did all of the work with mankind in the beginning, so he came, he created mankind. Mankind was for him. So he came down and he had to redeem his creation. So now, because the Father told him to. <laughs> but now, Genesis 19, 27 to 28, out of the Septuagint, this is um, more Torah. Now, and Abram rose up early to go to the place where he had stood before the Lord. So we have that all up here. And he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards the surrounding country and saw, and behold, a flame went up from the earth as the smoke of a furnace. So now we know that Abram stood before the Lord. So we have the meetings of Abram with the Lord, right? So now, verse Genesis 18, 10 through 13. And he, and I got the Lord, one of the three men that he saw, said, I will return and come to thee according to this period seasonably. And Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard at the tent, at the door of the tent, being behind him. And Abraham and Sarah was old, advanced in days, and the custom of women ceased with Sarah. So now, um, she didn't hit, uh, what's that called? Uh, that stage where women uh, cannot have kids no more uh, when they stop bleeding. Y'all know what I'm saying, but uh, I can't think of it right now. Verse 12, And Sarah laughed at herself, saying, The thing has not as yet happened to me, even until now, and my Lord is old. So she called Abram her Lord. And the Lord said to Abram, Why is it that Sarah has laughed in herself? Laughed, look, she laughed in herself. So, <laughs> this is something mentally going on. She laughed in herself. Why is it that Sarah has laughed in herself, saying, Shall I then indeed bear? But I am grown old. And the point was, at this point in time, uh, the Lord, he worked off of faith. Faith was believing. Believe all things that he said. So, Sarah laughing would be a way of saying, uh, it seems like that she don't trust me, therefore she's not displaying the faith I need her to display. But she's like, no, no, I didn't laugh, I didn't laugh. So, <laughs> so she came back with the faith. But anyway, so now let's go to Genesis 21, 9 through 12. So now, we see here, he promised to return, right? I will return and come to thee. So we have the Lord uh, promise promising Abram that he was going to return unto him. So Genesis 21, 9 through 12. And Sarah, having, uh, he was going to return to her, or sorry, to them, in the period seasonably. So now, and Sarah, having seen the son of Agar, the Egyptian, who was born to Abram, sporting with Isaac, her son. Then she said to Abram, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bond woman shall not inherit with my son Isaac. But the word appeared very hard before Abram concerning his son. But God said to Abram, you see the angel returned as he said he would. Christ said, I mean, what well, Christ, which is that God, said that he was going to return to Abram. So he did. Let it be not, uh, let it not be hard before thee concerning the child. And the and concerning the bond woman, and all things whatsoever Sarah shall say to thee, hear her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So now, we have, uh, that's just showing that God 
went before Abram and conversed with him over and he came back. So now we know there ain't no man ever seen God the Father. So what God was doing all this stuff. So now, Genesis 19, 23 through 24 in the Septuagint. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Segar. And the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone, and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So now, if you didn't catch it, you missed it. So, I'm going to read it a little slower so you can catch it. Uh, Genesis 19 and 24. And the Lord one, rain on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. We have two different lords right here dealing with the events that happened to Sodom and Gomorrah and surrounding uh, cities. We have two different lords. Two different lords. If we remember, when it, <clears throat> Abraham saw three, he saw three people. One of them was God. Uh, two of the angels went out. One of them stayed behind, or that God stayed behind. And those in subjection to him, which was those angels, went out to Sodom and Gomorrah. So now, we have the Lord, which is one Lord, reign on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord, another Lord, out of heaven. So once again, in the Torah, we have two lords. We have two gods. We have two deities. Right here, once again, in front of you, for you to see. The Lord reigned on Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord out of heaven. We had a Lord on earth and the Lord out of heaven. Two different lords. Once again, two deities. And this is why this is in agreement with the Psalm of David. 109 Septuagint, 110 KJV. Uh, one. The Lord said to my Lord. So once again, you see? The Lord rang on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of heaven. So now, the Lord said unto my Lord. You see, these are two different lords, two different powers, two different gods. So now, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So now, let's look at Psalms 44, 5 through 8 from the Septuagint. So, I mean, you have it right there, the two gods, the two lords. So right here. Five, thy weapons are sharpened, mighty one. The nations shall fall under thee. They are in the heart of the king's enemy. enemies. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a scepter of righteousness. Once again, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of thy kingdom is the scepter of the righteous. And I made this point earlier, but we're going to hit it again. Thou hast loved righteousness and hast, and hast hated iniquity. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness before thy fellows. So we see it again. We went over this earlier, but we see it again. Thou, therefore, God, so this God, who will have the throne forever, this is the same blessing that the Father gave Christ. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee. Two different gods. Therefore, God, who's receiving the anointing, who has the throne forever. Therefore, God, thy God, the highest God, the Father God, has anointed thee. So we have two different gods in the Torah and in the Tanakh. So I don't know where y'all think this guy went to. I don't know where y'all think this second guy went to if it's not Christ. I need to know where this second guy went to. Because this second guy is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So I need to know where that guy went to because he's not the father God. 
So y'all denying Christ. Talking about, I follow the God of Jacob, Isaac, and, 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 and uh, uh, Abraham, and I don't follow Christ. He was nothing to say to worship that God. Well, he's the same person. He's the same deity. What are you talking about? They worship him in the beginning. You worship him. If you worship him, then you're supposed to worship his completed works. What are you talking about? But now, Genesis 19, 13 through 16 from the Septuagint, another Torah. Uh, passage. For we are going to destroy this place. For their cry has been raised up before the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So now you have these two angels, right? Talking uh, to Lot. And they're telling them that they are in subjection to the Lord. Now, what does it say earlier? The Lord ran on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord in heaven. I'm just paraphrasing. The Lord on earth ran from the God in heaven, from the Lord in heaven. So here we have that Lord on earth sent these two angels to destroy uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. But now, and Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who had married his daughters and said, Rise up and depart out of this place. For the Lord is about to destroy the city. And we know that the Lord did it from the Lord in heaven. But he seemed to be speaking absurd, uh, absurdly before his sons and laws. But when it was morning, the angels hastened light. Why? Because the Lord made a decree and they had to do it. There was no plan. They, they was in subjection to this Lord. So just like loyal servants, they had to get Lot out of there. But now, saying, Arise and take thy wife and thy two daughters whom thou hast, and go forth. See, the, the son-in-laws, they wanted to be hard-headed, so these are the people that survived. Lest thou also be destroyed with the iniquities of the city. And they were troubled. And the angels laid hold on his hand, and on the hand of his wife, and the hands of his two daughters, in that the Lord spared him. So we have the Lord sparing Lot because uh, the Lord converts with Abraham. So now, Genesis 31, 10 through 13. The angel of God is God. So now, and it came to pass when the cattle conceived and were with young that I beheld with mine eyes in sleep. So this is a vision. And behold, the he goats in the realm sleeping on the sheep and the she goats speckled and variegated uh, and spotted with ash colored spots. And the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob. And I said, What is it? So now we have a deity being called the angel of God. Okay, verse 12. And he said, Look up with thine eyes, and behold, the he goats and the rams leaping on the sheep. And the she goats speckled and variegated and spotted with ash colored spots. For I have seen all things that Laban does to be. I am that God that appeared to thee in the place where thou anointest a pillar to me. So now we have this angel of God saying that actually he is that God that appeared. In the place of God was thou anointed a pillar to me. So we have this angel saying, hey, Jacob, I have appeared to you before. I am that God. I am God that appeared. I am that God, even though he was an angel, which is a messenger of God. He was the word of the Father. He was the messenger of the Father. He said, I am that God that appeared to you before. Where you put a, where, where you put a pillar up for me, and vow is to me there a vow. Now arise and depart out of this land, depart into the land of thy nativity, and I will be with thee. Once again, I will be with thee. I, the messenger of God, I that Christ God, that other God, that other Lord will be with thee. I am your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would be that Christ God, would be that word God. It's not the Father talking to them. So now, Genesis 32, 22 through 30. 
And he rose up in the night, in that night, and took his two wives and his two uh, servant maids with his eleven children and crossed over the ford of Jabach. Jabach. And he took them and passed over the torrent and brought over all his possessions. And Jacob was left alone. And a man, look, now we have it right here. And a man wrestled with him till the morning. Who? A man wrestled with him till the morning. And he saw that he prevailed not against him. And he touched the broad part of his thigh. And the broad part of Jacob's thigh was benumbed in his wrestling with him. And he said to him, let me go. For the day has dawned, but he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said to him, What is thy name? And he answered, Jacob. And he said to him, Thy name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. For thou hast prevailed with God. So this man that he was wrestling, this man that Jacob was wrestling, was indeed God. Now, do you think it was God the Father? Of course not. No man has seen the Father except the Son, except that which is begotten of him. So, this would be, once again, another God, or this would be Christ. Jacob will be wrestling with Christ, and shall be mighty with men. And notice, he said, Thou hast prevailed with God. He changed his name to Israel, and Israel deals with God. The name Israel deals with God. That's going to be important later. And shall be mighty with men. And Jacob asked and said, Tell me thy name. And he said, Wherefore dost thou ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place the face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face and my life was preserved. So Jacob saw God. He understood that was God. And he uh, said that his life was, was preserved from seeing God. And I'm here to say that that God, the reason why he didn't tell him his name right then because his name was actually Israel. That God name was Israel and he named Jacob after himself. But we're going to show that a little later on. But we have once again God being seen by mankind. And we know ain't no man seen the Father. So now, Genesis 28, 10-19 The Son of Man is God. And Jacob went forth from the well of oath and departed to into Charon, and came into a certain place and slept there, for the sun had gone down, and he took one of the stones of the place and put it at his head and lay down to sleep in that place, and dreamed, and behold, a ladder fixed, this is a vision, a ladder fixed on the earth, whose top reached to heaven, and the angels of God ascended and descended on it. So the angels of God was descending and ascending upon the ladder. And the Lord stood upon it, which was the ladder, and said, I am the God of thy father Abram and the God of Isaac. Fear not. The land on which thou liest to thee will I give it into thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the sand of the earth, and it shall spread abroad to the sea, and to and the south, and the north, and to the east, and in thee. And in thy seed shall all, shall all tribes of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee to preserve thee continually. And oh, sorry, y'all. I am, behold, I am with thee to preserve thee continually in all the way wherein thou go, thou shalt go. And I will bring thee back to this land, for I will not uh, desert thee until I have done all that I have said to thee. So now we have right here, remember uh, Christ was that rock 
that followed uh, Moses. So now we have uh, the same deity saying that he's going to follow uh, Israel right now. Or follow Jacob. But let's look. Let's look at it again just in case we miss something. Let's, let's go up just in case we miss something. We have the angels of God on the ladder. And then we have the Lord on the ladder also. And we know that this Lord is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob also, because he's talking to Jacob. But anyway, so we have in vision form. So this is a vision. In vision form, we have the angels and God upon this ladder. We have angels and God upon this ladder. So now, and let's see, verse 16, And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and said, The Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How fearful is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up in the morning and took the stone he had laid there by his head, and he set it up as a pillar and poured, uh, poured oil on it, and he called the name of that place the house of God, and the name of the city before him was Ulam Luz. So this is the same thing that we read earlier. I am the one that you put the pillar before and you uh, anointed to me. So this is the same God right here. So this God was seen in vision form, and even though it was vision form, uh, that God said, hey, I am that God that you made that uh, pillar for. So now, Let's see what this is saying. John 1, 47 through 51 from the King James Version. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, Thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. So he's respecting his deity. You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter, Ye shall see heaven open, and the well because you know they was in the gate, they was at the gate of heaven. But anyway, verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So now we have, so he will be that ladder. But now in vision form, it was a ladder. Without the vision. That ladder actually represented Christ. It actually represented it, the Son of Man. So, in vision, this is how visions work. It's always representations of things. So, in vision form, he saw something uh, carnal. He saw a ladder, but dealing with the truth, the spirit, the spirituality behind it, this ladder actually was a deity. It actually was the Son of Man, and upon that Son of Man. The angels was ascending and descending uh, unto uh, between heaven and earth. But what was up here? Up, up, up here, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was also on that ladder. And down here, we have that son of man actually being that ladder. So, you see, he don't bring up the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob here. And why do you think because of that? Instead, you have the word the Son of Man. Above at top, you don't have the word Son of Man. You have the words ladder and uh, uh, Lord and God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was the Son of Man. See, the Son of Man was a mediator between the heavens and the earth. Once again, the Son of Man was the mediator between the heaven and earth. So, 
you have this mediation between what's being what's being uh, instructed in heaven uh, going on earth, and then they're going right back up to heaven and earth, and they're doing all kind of mediation, you know, uh, bringing blessings and curses and etc. But here you have Christ actually being that ladder. So through Christ, the blessings and the curses of the judgment was coming. And Christ would be that God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was on that ladder. So that means the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was upon Christ. That God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was upon on Christ. He was he would be that Christ. Because no man has seen the Father. So he would be that Christ. So now, and then we have the I am statement. John 8 58 through 59. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Exodus 3.14 from the King James Version Bible. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. So, we have him saying that he was that I am before Abraham. And now we have that same I am dealing with Moses. Uh, that was over the children of Israel. That's why these men got so mad and wanted to kill him. For what he was saying. Because they understood that there would be a God. They understood that would be God. They understood that would be God. So they, they weren't dealing with that. So they tried to kill him. So now, Exodus 3, 2 through 6, 14 through 17, dealing with the Septuagint. And an angel, see, we have uh, him called the angel of God. Uh, we have him being called God. We have him being called the Lord of hosts, the King of kings. Lord of Lords, the King of Glory. So we see that this God has many of names for one deity. Well, let's keep going. And an angel of the Lord, which is one deity, appeared to him in flaming fire and out of the bush. And he sees that the bush burns with fire, but the bush was not consumed. So now, there's only one deity here. The angel of the Lord is the only deity that appeared to him in flaming fire. Not two people, not two lords, not two deities, but one. An angel of the Lord, a messenger of the Lord. And uh, Moses said, I will go near and see this great sight. Why the bush is not consumed. And when the Lord saw that he drew nigh to see, the Lord called him out of the bush, saying, Moses, Moses. And he said, what is it? So now, we have the Lord, the angel of the Lord, appearing to him in flaming fire out of the bush. So we have that flaming fire uh, burning, well, being encompassing the bush, but not burning up. So Moses see that fire, and that fire is actually the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the Lord, and that fire represents him. So now, and he said, draw not nigh hither. Loose thy sandals off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. And he said, listen to what he said, I am, so we have the I am again, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So now, we have the angel of the Lord being the God of the of Moses' father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So once again, we have two deities, okay? We have two deities in the Torah. We have an angel. And who was that angel? He was a messenger. And who was he a messenger of? The Lord. So we have the messenger and we have the Lord. We have the angel and we have the Lord. 
So now, we have the messenger and the Lord. But the messenger is also called the Lord. So now, we have a Lord and a Lord. We have a messenger and we have a Lord. But the thing about this messenger or the Lord was, this messenger was the God of, the fa of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So that messenger was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the God of, of Moses' father. And that God was actually a messenger of the other God. He was the so in other words, he was the word, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. That God was the word, and he was the messenger of the Father God. So now, and Moses turned away his face, for he was afraid, afraid to gaze at God. So he saw the, the burning bush, he realized he was God, he turned his face. And God spoke to Moses, saying, I am the being. And he said, Thus shall ye say to the children of Israel, The being has sent me to you. This is from the Septuagint. And God said again to Moses, So this angel is God, and he's speaking to Moses, Thus shalt thou say to the sons of Israel, the Lord God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. Has sent me to you. This is my name forever. So now his name forever is the being. The being has sent me. I am the being. This is my name forever. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we have another name. He's called the being in the Septuagint. But anyway, and my memorial to generation of generations, and my memorial to generations of generations, go then and gather the elders of the children of Israel, and thou shalt say to them, The Lord God of our fathers has appeared to me, the God of Abraham and God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, saying, I have surely looked upon you, and upon all the things which have happened to you in Egypt. And he said, I will bring you out of the affliction of the Egyptians to the land of the Canaanites. So now that I will bring you out, bring you up out, who did that? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which was the uh, angel of the Lord. So two deities, two gods. So now. Proverbs 8, 20 through 32. And y'all, we about done. We about done. So now, Christ was before the earth. I walk in ways of righteousness. I am conversant with the paths of judgments, that I may divide substance to them that love me and may fill their treasures with good things. If I declare to you the things that daily happen, I will remember also to recount the things of old. The Lord made me the beginning of his ways for his works. He established me before time was in the beginning, before he made the earth. So we see these are another deity inside of the heavenlies before the earth was created, even before he made the depths, before the fountains of water came forth. Before the mountains were settled and before all hills, hills he begets me. The Lord made countries and inhabited and, and, and uninhabited tracts and, inhabit, and the highest inhabited parts of the world. When he prepared the heaven, I was present with him. And when he prepared his throne upon the winds, so we have him being prepared. When, when the heaven was being prepared, we have a deity present with him which we call wisdom also. And when he strengthened the clouds above, and when he secured the fountains of the earth, decree, and when he strengthened the fountains of the earth, I was with him. So this is the beginning. This is Genesis. Suiting myself to him, I was that wherein he took the light. And daily I rejoiced in his presence continually. 
So we see what's happening in Genesis, okay? For he rejoiced when he had completed the world and rejoiced among the children of men. Now then, my son, hear me. I want to say, for he rejoiced when he had completed the world and, re and rejoiced among the children of men. So he rejoiced with the completion of the world as well as with children of men. Now then, my son, hear me. Blessed is the man who shall hearken to me and the mortal who shall keep my ways. So we have a deity being there with the Father in the beginning. So now, us. And then people say, well, I thought uh, Christ was the one who uh, completed the world and, and did this and that. Yep. Christ would be that one that was going through and doing the things that the Father told him to do. The Father told him to create, he created them. So this is just stepping outside of that paradigm. Christ is pretty much talking in third person. So now, Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man according to our image and likeness. So we have the us right there. Let us make man according to our image and likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the flying creatures of heaven and over the cattle and over and all the earth and over the reptiles that creep on the earth. So when people say there, that, okay, so you have some scholars saying, well, that us right there, so I don't know what I did. When he said that us right there, that is it's it's like majestic superiority or something. That us right there means a dignity or a deity that's singular but can have a plural manifestation. Yeah, that's true. Or it could be that us, as in more than one deity, as the rest of scriptures point to. I believe that's what it is. But now, I believe it also goes with Genesis 3.22. And God said, Behold, Adam is become as one of us. So I believe this same us is that same us up there. Has become one of us. And as they say, the Father is talking to himself. To know good and evil, and not lest at any time he stretch forth his hand and take of the tree of life and eat, and so he shall live forever. So now, we have Christ being the chief captain also. Christ called the chief captain. Let's look in Joshua 5, 14 through 16, and 6, 1 through 3. This is the Tanakh. And he said to him, I am now come, the chief captain of the host of the Lord. So I'm the captain of the host of the Lord. And Joshua fell on his face upon the and Joshua fell on his face upon the earth and said to him, Lord, what commandest thou thy servant? So he's calling his chief captain, Lord. And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Loose thy shoe off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. We, we didn't read that before, did we? Then we read that dealing with Jacob. Uh, I think Moses had to go through that too. This is a thing that Christ uh, does. Now Jericho was closely shut up and besieged, and none went out of it, and now came in, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, so now we see that this is the Lord. And the Lord said to Joshua, Behold, I delivered Jericho into thy power, and, it, and its king in it, and its mighty men. And, and do thou set the, work, the men of war round about it. So we have the captain of the Lord actually being the Lord also. So now that's another one of his positions. So now, Psalms 45 and 11. The Lord of hosts, which we know this is Christ now, this is the other deity or the king of glory. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our helper. So now we see that the God of Jacob is the Lord of hosts. And we have read, we have read and we have discussed earlier that the Lord of hosts was that second deity, that second God inside of the heavens, which is also the king of glory, which is also being Christ, king of kings, lord of lords, this would be Christ. He would come with all of the hosts of heaven to extract vengeance, the son of man, this would be Christ. So now, Isaiah 42, 1-8 through in the Septuagint, we have Christ, the, ch the chosen, is Jacob. So now, we have Christ representing Jacob, or we have Jacob 
representing Christ. So now let's see this. Jacob is my servant. I will help him. Israel is my chosen. My soul has accepted him. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So now, we know that Jacob himself did not, um, well, he was holy, but he did not bring judgment to the Gentiles. Okay? He was he was a the uh, the Israelite was a chosen people, but this is Jacob being uh, in singularity right now. So let's just read it. Uh, I will help him. My soul has accepted him. My spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So we see that it was prophesied that Jacob, this Jacob, was going to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. So now. He shall not cry, nor lift up his voice, nor shall his voice be heard without. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, but he shall bring forth judgment to truth. Now we know in Matthew 16, 27, 28, Christ said, I am coming to reward every man. So Christ was coming with that judgment, but let's keep reading. He shall shine out and shall not be discouraged until he have set judgment on the earth. Not them, not the Israelites, but he. And his name shall be, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. So we see right here, this takes away from Israel only. This takes away from Israel only. In the name will the Gentiles trust. So the Gentiles had a portion. Thus said the Lord God. So now this is the Lord God saying this. Who made the heaven and established it. Who settled the earth and the things in it. We see this in Proverbs. And gives breath, breath to the people on it. And spirit to them that tread on it. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness. And will hold thine hand. And will strengthen thee. And I have given thee for a covenant of a race, for a light of the Gentiles. So now, once we read anything in the Torah and the Tanakh right now, we should understand that it's two deities. So we got to find out which deity is talking, which deity. So now, we have the Lord, one deity has called this Jacob into righteousness. And he has given this Jacob for a covenant of a race, for a light of the Gentiles. So this Jacob was given was was supposed to be a covenant and a light to the Gentiles. Okay. So this Jacob was to open the eyes of the blind. When did Jacob do that? When did the man Jacob do that? To bring the bound and them that sit in darkness. To bring the bound, and them that sit in darkness out of the bounds, and the prison house. I am the Lord God. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another. Other, this is my notes, others beside the these spoken of in the previous verses, aka Israel, aka Christ, neither my praises to graven images. So what people say is, Christ can't be real. Christ cannot be real. He cannot be the God. He cannot be the Christ because God said, "I would." the Father said, I would not give my glory to another, which means the Father glories only for himself. That's not what the verse is saying. The verse is saying, I shall, this is what the verse is saying right here. I will help him. I have accepted him. He shall bring judgment. He shall not break a reed. He shall bring forth judgment. He shall shine out. He shall set judgment on the earth. His names will the Gentiles trust. Not my name, the Father. 
but in his name shall the Gentiles trust. The Lord has called thee, that him, into righteousness. He will hold thine hand, that he. He will strengthen thee, that him. I have given thee for a cup of that him. He will be a light for the Gentiles. He will open the eyes of the blind. He will bound them that sit in darkness. I have not given my glory to another besides him. No other will get my glory. My glory will not go towards another person except the one that I have chosen. This is what it's saying. I will not give my glory to another. Only that him, that him, that he, he gets all of the blessing. He gets the spirit. He gets the covenant. Well, he is the covenant. He is that light. He, he has that glory. Uh, the glory won't go to nobody else except him. I would not give my glory to another. I would give it to you. That's what it's saying. It's not saying that no deity ever would get the glory besides the Father. So look, it said, nor my praises to any graven images. My praises, look, nor my praises. I would not praise graven images. I will praise him who I chose. He, I have called thee in righteousness. He was pleased with the Christ, with the word, with the God, that God that he created. He was pleased with him. Would no other get his glory, would no other get the praise from the Father. So now, let's go to Matthew 12, 5 through 8 and 14 through 21. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. He didn't say greater than the people. He said one is greater than the temple. Now do you know how much the Israelites loved that temple? They was willing to die for that temple and that worship. They felt that that temple was the only thing that got them connected to the God they love that temple. And Christ is right there saying, one here is greater than that temple. I'm greater than the, the temple that you're looking at, the temple that you love, that, that temple that you just can't deal without and all that stuff. I'm greater than that temple. How is he? Because he was the God. He was a God too. He was the word. He was the God that, that made sure mankind was able to, to continue on. He was that God. So I am that one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, look, if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would have not condemned the giftless. For the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath day. I am the Lord. I am the Lord of the temple. I am the Lord of all these ordinances that you're doing. They're about me. I am. Christ said, I am the Lord. I am even the Lord of the Sabbath day. I am the Lord of the rest. I am the Lord of the eternal rest. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from this, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of by Isaiah, uh, Isaiah the prophet, saying, and we just read it, Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. Now look, he's praising him. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench. 
till he sent forth judgment. He sent forth judgment upon victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. See up here in the Tanakh. This is said, this is Jacob. This is Jacob. But we see the true meaning is this is actually Christ. And Christ was the beloved of the Father. Christ was the servant. Christ had the spirit. Christ was going to show judgment to the Gentiles. Christ shall not strive nor cry. Christ shall not bruise or read or break it. Christ shall not quench the smoking flax. Christ shall set forth the judgment into victory. Christ will be the names in which the Gentiles trust. Christ will be the one that the Father will give glory to. The Father was not going to give glory to any other except Christ. The Father was not going to give any praises to any other except Christ, his servant. Except uh, uh, that, that, that word. So now we have a son is born out of Isaiah 9, 6 through 8. And I got it in Septuagint. I'm going to read it out of Masoretic too. For a child is born to us and a son is given to us. See, they want this to be about Hezekiah or whatever else uh, king they make up at the time. They want this to be about some king of Israel. So let's read it in a context and see if a king of Israel fit the bill or if this can only be Christ. For a child is born to us, and, it's, and they said born is to us, that means that he's already been born. They don't understand the foreshadowment on how the Holy Spirit worked. He always gave a piece of the story. But now, for a child is born to us, and a son is given to us, whose government is upon his shoulder. And his name is called the messenger of the great council. Now, what is this messenger? Angel. The angel of the great council. Council. What did he say earlier? I am the angel of God. The great council will be God. I am the angel of God because he was the messenger of God. And later on, he called him God because he's not only is he that messenger, but he is that the other deity. But anyway, his name is called the messenger of great council. For I will bring peace upon the princes and health to him. His government shall be great, and of his peace there is no end. Now, which one of those kings had a peace that never ended? Mm -hmm. You tell me. It shall be upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to establish it. So he was going to establish it correctly. And to support it with judgment and with righteousness from henceforth and forever. From now and forever. How could this be a Hezekiah or anybody else? They didn't live forever. What are you talking about? And the judgment with and to support it with judgment. Now, what we read earlier, he was going to bring judgment. Look, till he sent forth judgment unto victory. And his name shall be, uh, and his name shall the Gentiles trust. Not the Israelites that in the Gentile mindset, but the Gentiles should trust in his name. So now, we know that this Christ was said to bring judgment. We, we read it right here. We read it right here in Matthew. So this is about Christ. And Christ was supposed to bring judgment. We have it right here in Isaiah. This person was supposed to bring judgment with righteousness forever. Henceforth and forever. The seal, the mark of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Who? The Lord of hosts. The mark of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. Who was the Lord of hosts? Christ, the King of glory. The mark of Christ shall perform this. In other words, Christ, he will perform this. The seal, the mark of Christ, of the King of glory, shall perform this. This is something that Christ had to perform. It says it right there, the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts was Christ shall perform this. The Lord has sent death upon Jacob and it has come upon Israel. So now let's read from the King James Version or the Masoretic text, the later one. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So we know right here, this ain't no Hezekiah or none of them. They was never called an everlasting, never-ending father. They was never called the Mighty God. This is only one. There was only two deities, only two gods. So neither one of them was that God. So I don't know how they get any other person besides Christ and the Father. But anyway, of the increase of his government and peace, there should be no end. And upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a word unto Jacob and has lighted up upon Israel. Uh, let's see here. So now, um, sorry, uh, my, I, I have that much left. I'm going to stop right now. Hello. I'm going to stop right now and I'm going to finish later on. Boy, I didn't tell you. All right, let's call it quick right now. Sorry, y'all. Uh, no. All right, y'all, thank y'all for listening on. It's going to get loud, so that's why I'm going to stop it right now. So uh, thank you all for listening on. Hopefully this made sense, and I will do part two tomorrow. Tomorrow evening or tomorrow night, I will do part two. So thank you all for listening. Uh, once again, uh, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel right here, Assembly of Sound Doctor and Chandler, A-O-S-D-C-H-A-N-D-L-E-R. I only have 91 subscribers. Please subscribe to it. Look it up. I have over 100 and something videos. And I will see you all tomorrow. Love you all. Thank you all for listening. Shalom. Shalom.